I'm currently watching Awari Monogatari, but um, I I'm getting so invested in Monogatari, just uh, specifically Monogatari because it's so aesthetically out there that I'm thinking about buying a new monitor that's specifically designed to be good for watching anime just so like i get better color accuracy and like contrast and shit just so i can like watch monogatari even better and then like once i get that once i get that monitor i'm gonna fucking go i'm gonna get a vpn again i'm gonna go to nyasai i'm gonna get the fucking raws like I seriously think I'm going to do that. I don't know why. I'm just like so... I've never cared about getting like the best picture quality ever in my life. But I'm watching Monogatari and I'm just like, bruh. What I love about Monogatari 2 is it, it, it makes it so... There's so many reasons why Monogatari is super easily rewatchable. But I think one of the biggest selling points, at least for me... And I guess kind of for anyone, I think, is it's a show where you can just watch any season you want. Like it Monogatari is oddly episodic. Like it's not, but it kind of is. And I mean that's partially due to the fact that when the anime came out, it came out in chron uh sorry, airing order versus chronological. So like literally, you know. Bake Monogatari is the first one that came out, but that's not the first in the series. The first in the series is Kizu Monogatari. So, like, because of that, it's so simple to jump into anything. And along with that, um, the main character you follow, Araragi, doesn't even get his own character arc until Awari Monogatari, which is the third last season. Up until Awari Monogatari, Araragi stays mostly the same in terms of his character issues and dilemmas that he goes through. So you can base, due to it being airing and the fact that Araragi remains fairly consistent regardless, you can jump into like any season and just watch it. And it's good. So that is so fucking appealing. Because I watched it in airing order and then I went back after like a few years, I'm like, I'm going to watch it in chronological now. And I, I watched Kizu, I watched Bake, I watched um, Neko, I watched Kuro, I watched Nisei, and then I stopped. And then, yeah, a couple days ago, I'm like, I want to watch Monogatari again. And I was like, eh, I don't really feel like picking it back up where I, like, left off chronologically, though. I kind of just, like, want to watch a wide Monogatari, because I love Ongi. And then I did. And I'm like, fuck. This shit's good as hell. <laughs> Ongi-chan! And again, now th this is much more subjective, but I, the Monogatari series, well, it's not fully, it's not fully subjective. The Monogatari series is very hard to consume and download and understand everything through one watching. That's partially due to the fact that you really cannot understand all of it unless you're native Japanese, but also there's just a lot of text. There's a lot of things that are being said, there's a lot of nuance to every single conversation and sentence that is on the screen. Um, again, that kind of goes along with, again, having to be native Japanese, because, like, every sentence can basically be interpreted in multiple different ways, depending on, like, how they're playing with the kanji and katakana and pronunciation and shit. So, like, there's just so much to download that um, you just can't, you just can't download at all in one watching. So there's that, plus airing, plus character consistency, and it's just like, you can just watch any, any season. It just, it just really doesn't matter. <laughs> and man, like, I mean, I, I've, I've, I've been talking about Awari Monogatari a lot right now. But I rewatched it for Ongi. Little did I know, Oikura is actually amazing. I totally wrote this character off the first time I watched the series. And she is now... Well, definitely in my top five favorite characters in the Monogatari series. She's probably, like, number five. Which sounds kind of low, but you gotta remember, there's, there's a lot of characters in Monogatari. I mean, you got Shinobu, you got Araragi, you got uh, Kanburu, you got Ungi, you got Oikara, 
you got Yotsugi, you got Nariko, you got Subasa, you got Hitagi, you got Karen, you got Tsukihi, you got um, Kaiki. That's pretty much all the characters I would include. I think like Gaien is kind of too much of a support character to really be considered like in that sort of favorites list. I mean, if she is your favorite, go for it, I guess, but... They 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 just they just don't feel as relevant enough for me to consider them like oh yeah Gaian favorite character I feel like how like how could you say that but again if they are more power to you so yeah I mean there's like ten characters that I, that I could really consider in my top five I think we get a squeezes in there is it number one Hitagi number two probably Shinobu I've really grown to. Just absolutely love Aradagi and Shinobu's relationship. I think it's just like one of the most nuanced and interesting relationships in any anime ever. I've rewatched Kizu Monogatari like five times. It's just, the films are just so incredible. And I mean, I made an AMV using, you know, Kizu Monogatari Raws. So like I, I had to watch it a lot when I was doing that too. I just, I love Kizu. And again, that's where you really kind of see how it all sort of starts. Ongi would probably be... Well, actually, it would probably be Hitagi, Ongi, Shinobu. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Araragi and Kaiki, but, like, they're men. <laughs> so I don't know if they can make it. Fuck, maybe Oikida is fourth, honestly. I mean, I like... I, I like Hanakawa, too. Nadako, low-key kind of based. All the characters are fucking based in the Mono God 3 series, so it kind of just... It's hard to rank them, because I just... I, I do like all of them in immense degree. Yeah, Oikura. Great. I love you. Give me kissy. Mm. But yeah, I just totally kind of forgot about her character arc. Super, super went under the radar for me during uh, my first watch. And the, the ending specifically for her arc is... Oh, man, you, you, you just can't help but well up with emotion. I don't know how much I'm really supposed to spoil. Because, I mean, it is like Monogatari spoils. But, like... Well, I, I, I guess I'll, like, very, very long story short it. Because th this isn't really spoilers, I guess. It sort of is a little bit. This character is Araragi's childhood friend. They used to meet up at a place every day learning math together and um before they even started doing it she she laid the ground rules there was like three ground rules it was like don't ask me about myself if i disappear don't go looking for me don't remember me or something i don't fucking know um essentially she ends up randomly disappearing after those meetups and uh and all Aradagi finds is an envelope with nothing in it. And it's like, damn, bro, she's literally just gone. Then after you go through her whole character arc, she eventually leaves again. But when Aradagi sits down at his classroom desk, he finds an envelope. And without even opening it, he feels that there's actually something inside it this time. He opens up the envelope. It's from Oikara. But uh, you decide what's written inside. And that's how it that's how it actually ends. That's that's Aradagi's last line. And it's just like fuck. Fuck. Also, Oikida's like classic line is like Daikidai. Like, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. She hates Aradagi more than anyone else in the world. So my interpretation was literally in the envelope, it just said, like, I like you. Or like, you know, you're cool. Apparently, there is a way to actually solve and figure out what she written wrote in there through like really crazy analysis. Um, and I did, I really didn't want to know what it said because I liked my interpretation of it. But I ended up looking, which is really unlike me, honestly. But I was so confident that mine was correct that I was like, eh, whatever, sure. I was pretty much correct. <clears throat> mute me for five seconds right now because i'm going to tell you the answer so if you don't want to know mute me um it's it, it, it just she wrote her phone number down and said give me a call when you want 
Fuck yeah! Which makes even more sense. Because again, she's grown as a character. And now, you can keep that connection. I loved it. It was such a good arc. <sighs> anyway. The Monogatari series is based. I love it. Yeah, Awari Monogatari Season 2 is... Well, I think Awari Monogatari Season 2 and Kizo Monogatari are my two favorites. And Bake. It's really hard to actually choose a favorite out of those three because I think they're all just amazing in their own right and do... They, they bring a lot of different things to the table, but I think they're all really important. So yeah, I would say Awari Monogatari Season 2, Bake Monogatari, and Kizu Monogatari. Those three, sure banging, sure banging. The easiest tens uh, in my life, basically. Um, all right, <laughs> see you later, Systemic. Thanks for coming by. Take care. Thanks for coming. I also have not watched Zoku um, Awari uh, uh, either. So, yeah. I've been uh, too scared to finish the last season of Monogatari still. Because I'm a pussy. And I hate finishing things that I love so dearly. I still haven't finished Umineko. But that's kind of for a reason. I'm waiting until Sofu and Josh catch up. That way we can all play like the last four hours together. And at this point, I'm okay with that because I stopped playing Umineko like six months ago. So at this point, I don't mind waiting another six months, I guess. But, um, yeah. <clears throat> but basically, so it goes Awari Monogatari Season 1, Awari Monogatari 2, and then it goes to Zoku. So um, I think I'm probably just going to finish both Awaris and then just watch Zoku. So I think I am just going to do that. I know it isn't the end of the light novels, but I have heard that the, what, what is it called? I forget what, what the other uh, light novels that aren't adapted are called, but I know. Off Season. It's called Off Season. It's Off Season and something else. I know they're not adapted, and I know there's a lot of content, and there's potential for, like, many more seasons of Monogatari because of it. But I've heard that it's extremely difficult to adapt, and I know Monogatari is also extremely difficult to adapt and everyone said it was going to fail because of it and then somehow it didn't, which is based as fuck. But I've heard it's like three times more difficult to adapt. And at this point, Shaft has went through staff a lot. So the team that made all of the Monogatari series up until this point doesn't really exist anymore. So... I don't know, man. The fact that it's really hard to adapt and we don't really have the originals anymore that were a part of the project. Well, all of them, at least. We, we definitely have a handful still. I almost don't even want them to adapt more. I, I think it just has such a potential to kind of dirty the name of Monogatari a little bit. So, yeah. I'm basically always viewing Zoku as, as the final. But, I don't know. If they give it a shot, then they give it a shot, I guess. I don't actually care that much. We'll see. Damn. I love Monogatari.